Hello YouTube land, I'm Eddie and this is Windy Therapy. This is my channel where I share motorcycle riding, camping and outdoor adventures. So if you're new here, welcome. And if you're not, thank you very much for sticking around and following me on my motorcycle camping trips or adventures throughout Canada and the US. Well, US as soon as I can cross the border. So today we're gonna be talking about what are the steps that I take to set up my campground with my pop-up camper, the Leisure Light XL, uh, and hopefully show you guys the main steps from A to Z, how to get it done. But if I miss any step, please feel free to ask me on the comment area down below, and I'll be happy to help you. So without further ado, let's give her. So here we are camping at the Shishwap Lake Provincial Park just outside of Salmon Arm in the interior of British Columbia, Canada. So this campground is also known as Scotch Creek and it's a massive campground which I love it. Now it has about 500 campsites. Uh, the sites are big so you barely hear or see your neighbors as you can tell. Here seems to be a good place to put the trailer. So let's remove the dry bags. By the way, I have two dry bags. One is 40 liters, the other one is 25, which I love. They're 100% waterproof. I went through a lot of rain of those. Nothing got wet and they're very, very durable. And if you happen to drop them inside a lake or a river, guess what? They will still float, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Now we just need to open the front storage pod. Right now I'm just looking, I have two levels, one at the front and one on the side. So right now I'm kind of eyeballing to make sure that the unit is somewhat level before I actually open it. Looks not too, too bad. So now it's just matter of dropping the rear jacks before actually opening the lid. I guess opening from this side will be a little bit easier. Now I'm just placing a, uh, a rod, people call it the stick, which is just a piece of just a little bar to keep the, the lid open while I place my handy dandy fancy pool noodles which are meant just really to avoid scratches on the rack. Some folks prefer to use uh, a rug or something, a piece of cardboard, but I believe they just add more weight that you don't need. And those pool noodles are very inexpensive and they do the job very, very nicely. And that's how it takes. You know? At this point, the pop-up camper is pretty much all done. Uh, I just, just gonna open the top uh, window cover or overhang should I say just go around just put the skirt over the edge 
make sure that not just in case it rains I don't want to get water inside of the unit looks pretty good now let's just go inside left the left and the right hand posts which is basically what supports the back of the unit as you can see and right now I'm just opening the valve of my self-inflating Thermo Rest Mondo King mattress but again I have other things to do in the meantime Let's just open this door and the mosquito net, get them out of the way, I don't want to be tripping. And typically what I do, I will open all four windows. Now, there's a big one on each side and one on the front and one on the back. Just allow the unit to kind of get some fresh air before it gets too cold or dark. Now I'm just going to bring a little tray that I carry, uh, which has my solar generator, my Coleman stove, and a foldable table. Kind of fits nice in that, that little uh, plastic uh, tote. Now I'm gonna just put my uh, my 70s uh, and colorful rug. I like to say that it's somewhat inspired by Austin Powers, so it looks kind of groovy. And uh, in a few more minutes, I'm gonna be speeding up the video because it will get to a point that you now we're going to be demonstrating some steps that people know and I don't want to waste your guys time showing basic steps I just want to show the main differences in what takes this unit apart from some other pop-up campers got the awning out now I'm just gonna get uh, the guidelines, the hammer, my big axe, which I don't know what I brought it because we are currently in a uh, fire ban. But hey, whatever. If a, if a bear comes by, I have an axe. And before I forget, folks, uh, the next video I'm gonna be showing you what I'm calling my top five luxury items that I'm carrying with me and when I say luxury it's not really because they cost a lot of money but because they really really elevate the level of comfort or safety during my trip so stay tuned for the next video I hope you guys like it you're gonna see probably some gadgets that you've never seen before or perhaps that you have questions about in the meantime I'm here struggling to find uh, the right side uh, which is basically the one that has the zipper where is the zipper where is the zipper aha found it so now it's just a matter of putting the zipper and going all the way across that's pretty easy to do some folks prefer to leave the awning in place when they fold the unit uh, which I've done it before but the height is not that bad for me so I prefer to remove it because then I can clean it when I get home I can fold it nicely but again you don't need to remove it you can always keep it in place but one of the benefits of removing is the fact you can put on either side if you keep it installed on one side and you decide to have the unit facing the other way you have to change the awning from front to back or vice versa again not a big deal you can always turn the unit around if you need to 
but I just prefer to remove it. I guess it's easy for me. Right now, as you guys can see, I'm speeding up the video. I'm not that fast in real life, so the video right now is going two times faster than normal. And again, my purpose is really to avoid you guys to waste your time seeing stuff that you already know. Something cool also, those uh, yellow guidelines, they're reflective. So I find it's kind of cool at night. You no, know, I can see the guidelines when I'm walking about. Uh, not that people walk through my sight, but just in case a kid comes by running at night or someone does it, at least they can see the guidelines and avoid someone to trip or hang themselves. So not expensive. I think it was about four bucks or so. Waterproof and reflective. You guys probably noticed by now that the time to do this is probably longer than assembling the camper itself. Uh, if I had someone with me, it would have been fast or faster, uh, but doing those uh, steps by yourself is a little bit tricky. You know, you kind of hold one pole, the other one goes down. Um, I more or less got in a, in a nice routine that works for me. But if you have someone to help you, you can definitely do this stuff much, much faster. I also bought this uh, guideline adjusters, uh, which is a little aluminum piece, uh, those red ones that you can see there, that allows me to adjust the guideline without having to change the knots or moving the pegs. Uh, very easy stuff to buy, not expensive. I think it was about four bucks for 10 or so. And uh, it really made my life easier. Now I'm just gonna assemble my uh, woods foldable table from Canadian Tire in Canada, but I'm sure you can find in any other camping uh, store, uh, wherever you are. I'm currently debating if I would bring this table again. Uh, it was very handy for me, it's nice to have it, uh, but it's just another piece that, you no, know, it has a weight to it, right? And when you're hauling a trailer, you have to be mindful that any five pounds or 10 pounds you're carrying gets a little bit more difficult for, for the motorcycle and for yourself. So I'm always mindful about weight. So not sure if I'm gonna bring this table again because I can always use the picnic table from the campground itself. But we keep learning every time. Every time we have a trip, we learn something new. Uh, on the right hand side, uh, on your left, you can see my Jackery 300, which is uh, a godsend. I really love this unit, which I will tell you more on my next video. And that's pretty much it, folks. I hope you guys like it. If you did, give me the famous thumbs up. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comment areas down below. And as always, be good, be safe, and let's keep the rubber side down. Cheers.